Hey everybody, Dr. Vaizo here, and in this video we're going to talk about pressure and flow physiology. It should be a little bit shorter video. I'm going to hit on three major things. We'll talk about compliance, we'll talk about Pazuel's law, pressure versus resistance, what are the big things you need to know, and then we'll talk a little bit about baroreceptors, chemoreceptors. So let's just start with compliance. So this is a concept that's kind of confusing, but if you think about it intuitively, it actually it makes it a little bit easier. So let's just say we have some blood vessel here. I'm not saying it's a vein, I'm not saying it's an artery, it's just some vessel, okay? It's arbitrary. So let's just say that I increase the pressure in this vessel, okay? Now, if I had a very compliant structure here, okay, so something that's very compliant. In other words, it's willing to meet the demands of this pressure. It can accommodate that pressure by dilating, okay? So a very compliant vessel can accommodate the changes in pressure by dilating. Now, if I had a vessel that was not compliant, okay, so it's not compliant, what would happen in this situation? Well, it's probably not going to accommodate the changes in pressure very much, right? So in general, we would say in this vessel, because I was able to change my volume, my pressure didn't really go up so much, okay? So for some given change in pressure, okay, I had a much greater change in volume or some change in volume that was able to accommodate that pressure. Again, all of this is arbitrary. I'm just trying to get the point across that a compliance structure, right, compliant because the volumes here in the numerator, as my volume increases, that's going to increase my compliancy. So if I can increase my volume more, I'm going to be a more compliant vessel to changes in pressure. On the other hand, if my vessel doesn't really change very much when I increase the pressure, right, if I have a low compliance vessel, as I increase the pressure, right, the volume isn't really going to change. Okay, the volume is not going to change. And so you can see if I increase the denominator, but I don't change the volume, the compliance actually is going to be lower. Okay, so this is the concept for the arterioles. So the arterioles are going to be mostly the regulators of resistance. Remember, we said the arterioles are primarily going to be kind of synonymous with your total peripheral resistance, right, your afterload. Now, the other side of this is going to be the veins right, the venous system, and the venous, the venous system, remember, I said it's like a big refrigerator, it's like a big storage unit, okay, that's going to house all of this blood, and, you know, it's going to be very compliant, because the veins are going to, when there's blood coming in, they're going to kind of adapt and increase their volume or engorge to hold that blood, so that's what the veins are doing, and so the veins are going to be synonymous with preload, as we talked about, so the idea here is, if I constrict a vein, I'm shunting blood up to the heart, okay, if I dilate a vein, I'm going to accommodate more blood and I'm going to have less preload, less venous return to the heart. If I constrict the arterioles, I increase the TPR. If I dilate the arterioles, I decrease the TPR. And again, this is all kind of dictated by the muscle tone of the vessel wall. So in general, smooth muscle relaxation will be responsible for increasing compliance, particularly in the veins right? The veins are going to have much higher compliance overall, and smooth muscle contraction will be responsible for decreasing compliance. And again, remember, calcium is associated with the smooth muscle contraction, right? Elevations in calcium and CGMP and decreases in calcium are associated with dilation. Okay, so these are all things we kind of talked about a little bit already. Now, just to take this one step further, let's just make a graph here. And let's say that this is my pressure, and this is my volume. And I'm just going to draw some curve here like this. And, you know, just going back to your basic algebra, right? The slope of this is just going to be y over x, rise over run, which really is just volume over pressure, which is equal to the compliance, right? So this graph is essentially the slope of it is the compliance, okay? So if I have a higher slope, I'm going to have a higher compliance. Now, what I want to say is the reverse of that is the elasticity. Now, the elasticity, this is going to come into play more when we talk about the respiratory system, okay? When, where compliance is going to be our ability to change lung volumes in response to certain pressures, and the elasticity is the elastic recoil, which is inversely proportional to the compliance. Now, I don't want to talk any more about that in this video. I don't want to steal thunder from the respiratory video, so we're going to come back to that. But for this video, I want you to definitely remember compliance when, talk, when we're talking about these blood vessels and that the veins have high compliance and the arterioles have low compliance. So you can imagine the arterioles would have a curve that looks something like this, okay? But if we're talking about the veins, the veins would have a curve that probably looks something more, I don't know, like that, okay? So it's going to have a lot higher slope. The veins are going to be much better at accommodating these changes in pressures, right? So it's going to have a much higher slope. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, what about if I constricted my veins? If they give you a board question and they're asking about venous constriction, they'll say, what happens to this curve? 
Well, if, it was, if we're constricting the veins, it's going to come down, right? This would be associated with venous constriction, decreases in preload. What about if I dilate the veins? Nitric oxide, right? Nitric oxide's around. That's going to be dilation. That's going to move the curve up. If I dilate, I have more compliance. I've increased my volume at a, for a given pressure, right? So that's kind of the concept. Now, again, arteries, it's the same thing. If I dilate my arterioles, the curve is going to move up. If I constrict my arterioles, the curve is going to move down. Now, what happens when we get older, right? When we age, we have increased stiffness in our arteries. So a question can ask you about aging and say, okay, well, which way is this, cur is this curve going to go? Well, as we age, the curve should move down. We're going to have less change in volume for given pressure because the arteries are more stiff. If they're more stiff, they're less able to change their volume to adapt to changes in pressure. So the pressure inside that vessel is also going to be higher because the volume is not able to accommodate the changes in pressure. So that's what we'll typically see. Patients will have hypertension because they're not able to accommodate their changes in pressure. They're going to have very poor compliance. Now, I also want to say as you change pressures, remember if, you know, if all of a sudden you give a patient, you know, an agent that increases contractility, let's just say you give a patient dobutamine, you're increasing contractility, right? So the, the cardiac output is going to go up, the blood pressure is going to go up, particularly the systolic blood pressure. Now, when you give a patient that drug though remember at the site of the vessels not only are you talking about compliance but remember at a blood vessel we talked about this in the last video once you kick the pressure up what's going to happen right the walls here are going to detect that change in pressure and then we have endothelial cells here that will increase their calcium levels right and this increase in calcium will eventually cause increases in nitric oxide and that nitric oxide is going to go to the vascular smooth muscle, which is hanging out out here. Both sides of this blood vessel, we have endothelial cells, and then we have the vascular smooth muscle around that, which is responsible for dilation or constriction. And so if I have increases in pressure, there's going to be endothelial-derived uh, factors that increase the nitric oxide synthase that causes more nitric oxide. And we know nitric oxide can diffuse because it's a gas. It can go right into the vascular muscle. The nitric oxide can then cause increases in CGMP, and the CGMP is primarily associated with stimulation of myosin light chain phosphatase, which is going to take the phosphate off the myosin light chain and therefore cause decreases in contractility of that vascular smooth muscle that will cause dilation of the smooth muscle to respond to this change of pressure. Something we talked about in the last video, just integrating it, kind of nailing it down in your brain here.